Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to put a 3D printer such as a Mono Price Select Mini onto the Polar Cloud. From the Polar Cloud, you'll be able to access your printer from anywhere on the internet securely. You'll be able to control it, start prints, soft prints. You'll even be able to share the printer with friends or other people, students perhaps. This is all possible through the Polar Cloud. To do this, we'll be using OctaPrint running on a Raspberry Pi. This is a Raspberry Pi 3 here. I won't detail how to set up OctaPrint on a Raspberry Pi. There's plenty of other videos that explain that. And we'll just link to a few of them. But I would like to explain a couple of pieces that we'll put onto our Raspberry Pi in order to uh, make for the best possible experience. So a Raspberry Pi 3. Whether or not you put the heat sinks on that may or may not have come with your Pi 3, that's up to you. They're not really needed for this application. We will be putting a Wi-Fi dongle on. Just because even though Pi 3s have Wi-Fi built in, eh, your mileage may vary. You'll need an SD card, 16 gigabytes at least, 32 is fine. I just go for whatever is a good name brand and not too expensive. External power supply for your Pi 3. A camera. A camera will be really nice because you'll be able to remotely see what your printer is printing, what it's doing. And you can even save time-lapse images for later diagnostics or just showing your friends. And just any sort of inexpensive USB camera. You do not need an expensive one. You definitely want a case to put your Pi 3 in. Otherwise, it's just kicking around. And if a screwdriver or a bolt rolls underneath it, it might short it out. And you'll need a USB cable to connect the Pi 3 to your printer. The type of USB cable you need will depend upon what type of connector your printer has. Without much to do, we'll cut over to installing the plugin. So here we have OctaPrint all set up, and I actually have the camera pointing at the um, 3D printer. There's a bit of glare on the print, but the camera's there. And before we install the Polar Cloud plugin, let's go ahead and just make sure we can talk to the printer. The first thing to do is set up a profile for the printer. And you have to find it. You go over to the OctaPrint settings, and profiles are here somewhere. I'm just, there we go, printer profiles. Second from the list, let's go ahead and edit it. Let's just call it Mono Price Select Mini and Select MP Select Mini. Set up the print bed volume. I think it's 140, 140, 140, tab 140. Yes, it has a heated bed. Also, you can set up information on the axes, it all looks fine. Hot and extruder looks fine. Go ahead, confirm and save it. <laughs> save again. And now let's go ahead and try to connect. Do we even see it there? Let's do a connect. Do, do, do. Oh, we're reading temperatures and we're all set. We can actually talk to the printer. Now let's go ahead and install the Polar Cloud plugin. Uh, again, we go to our settings, we go down to plugin manager. Um, it won't be here on the list until you say to get more, and then type just Polar. And there it is, Polar Cloud. Install it. This will take a minute or two. And we just kind of wait and wait. And there we go. It's installed. So now we hit restart. Proceed. At which point now Octoprint is going to restart itself. And we wait for it to reboot. While we're waiting for that, when we go over to the Polar Cloud, we need to know. Now the Polar Cloud, if you don't have an account there, you'll just be presented with a login screen with the choice of login with Google, Facebook, a couple of Microsoft choices. Just log in with whichever one you have and your account will be automatically created. When your account's created, go up here where you see your profile image. Uh, that's kind of just a default one for this account I'm using. But click on it, and where it says Settings, select that. And then what we want to do is, you know, want to note what email address we used, and we have a little PIN code that we need to register our printer with Polar Cloud. The PIN code here is 1234, and the email address right there you can see. Let's go back over to OctaPrint, See if it's ready to reload. There it is. Now to put this printer on the Polar Cloud, we again go to Settings. And then we scroll down here, and there's the Polar Cloud plugin. Click it. And we don't have a serial number yet. It'll be assigned. 
we can pick a machine type. Now, actually, it, you can use a generic or Cartesian, and then you have to do some stuff for the polar cloud, but there's a mono price select me right here. So let's take that, and then say you want to register the printer. It'll ask you for your email address, and then the PIN, which was conveniently one, two, three, four. The PINs are randomly assigned when your account's created. You can change them. There are a minimum of four numbers, and they can be upwards of about 16 numbers. You can set it to wherever you want, and then click register. And there we go. Hey, we got a serial number. It's an Octoprint 983. And go ahead and save this. <clears throat> Don't need to really save that. And now we can go back to Polar Cloud. And we go up here and we say printers. See this little, I click this little hamburger menu here. Click it, go to printers. And wow, there's our printer. And this is, uh, I'm seeing a live camera image because I'm on the same local network with it. If you were on a remote network, you would see a snapshot that's taken every few seconds and uploaded to the cloud. Actually, when the printer's idle, I think Octoprint only takes a snapshot about every minute. While it's printing, it takes more of them. I'm going to go here to the printer. Now, it says the USB disconnected because Octoprint restarted and didn't connect the USB when it restarted. Because Octoprint's default is to not connect the USB because there are some printers like ramps boards that will actually reset the printer controller when the USB connects. And if the print happened to be right, that would kill the print. But we can go from here and we can say connect. And we're waiting for a response from the printer. <clears throat> but it should connect. And matter of fact, ever seen temperatures again, so it's connected. But the Polar Cloud only updates its web page every 20 seconds. I got impatient, so I clicked it there. Okay, once the USB is connected, we'll see ready to print, and we'll see the temperatures, since this printer has both a Temperature read for the extruder and one for the heated bed. We see two dials. We might see three dials with the Dremel printer with the heated chamber. Chamber we actually see four. I happen to notice something odd. This appears to be a little gotchu in the Octoprint plugin at the moment. Even though I registered it as a mono price, it somehow went into the cloud as not a mono price. But I can change that. I've gone to uh, from the printer page. We call that main thing the dashboard. And I can go here to manage it. And then I go to settings where you can see some information. And down here, make. I want to change that. Let's change it to a mono price. Select mini. And say save. Now let's go ahead and print something. I can go over to objects. There's all sorts of objects you can search around. I want I get or you can upload your own objects. This account, I don't have any objects uploaded. You can also just share objects with people. Let me go search for, uh, there's a duck I want to find. And here it is, the cloud duck. Let's go ahead and print it. There was multiple, there could be multiple files here and then we'd be asked which file we wanted to print. And here it is on my printer, or on a virtual print bed. I could duplicate this and make more. There's all sorts of controls. I can add other objects. I can actually combine print jobs, objects from different ones. Here's the slicing config I have. You know, by default, if I can click on this, there's other choices. Let's go ahead and do them at 0.2 millimeter layer height. Temperature 210. I'm not too sure with the mono price main what its preferred temperature is, but let's leave that there. Let's put the platform at 50 degrees Celsius. I happen to know this filament I have in there is really about 1.67 millimeter diameter. And there's advanced settings. These are all cure settings. They kind of just kind of go on and on. They're all documented. You can play with the start G code. But when I'm happy with what I have, you'll go ahead and click the print, <laughs> print button. And it's re-uploading it. Because you know, what's happening is I've loaded an STL. Maybe I want to load some additional STLs. And it's going to combine them all into a single STL model that will be printed. And now here I have my printer queue. Now, if there was more jobs, I'd have a whole queue and the thing can scroll off the page. I can also allow other people to queue jobs to my printer. They might not be allowed to start the jobs, but they can at least queue. And this is this is all documented how you do this. Now, before I actually start the print, I want to go back to Octoprint. Now, before we start a print, let's enable time lapses. And the time lapse movies can be uploaded to the Polar Cloud, and you can see them later. They'll be each of your print jobs is actually saved with the actual STL, the slicer config settings and everything, and we can also save a time-lapse movie. So I went to the time-lapse tab here over in Octoprint. You only need to do this once, and I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to say 
take a snapshot every time the z height changes. But before we do this, and another one-time thing we need to do is if you go to the uh, the plugin repository or the over in GitHub where this where this Polar Cloud plugin lives, there's a little documentation on a step, a couple of steps you need to do. You need to log into to the Raspberry Pi and then issue these two commands. So I'm going to log in ssh eh, ssh as pi at what was the IP address of this one? You can actually find the IP address of your printer because it's because the Polar Cloud has a link to it where you can click on the local UI and actually go to it. And I can see it down at the bottom corner of my screen where it shows where that URL points is 10.30.0.168. This will be different on your own network. So that's what it is here, 10.30.0.168. And I'm being asked some things by SSH. And the default password for a Raspberry Pi is Raspberry. And there I'm logged in. Now I cut and paste those, or I cut those commands from my clipboard so now I can just do them. And they'll take a few minutes, actually they'll take several minutes to execute. The first one is just an sudo app get update to update the database on the Raspberry Pi as to what all, where all the packages live. And after that finishes, we run another one to install a bunch of tools for uploading time-lapse images. Once it's all installed or finishes installing, uh, you're left with a clear screen. And before you log out, it's also not a bad time to change the password from the default password. Uh, you say P-A-S-S-W-D, and you ask you for the current one, which was Raspberry. And then you can type in a new password. And you're done. So now you can exit, and we can get rid of this window. And now we're all set to be able to have time-lapse movies actually saved to the Polar Cloud. So we can start this print going here. Just go back here to the cloud window. I mean, here's what we see from the Octoprint window. Here's what we see over in the Polar Cloud. And this is why I would say if I would look at, at my cell phone from halfway around the world, or you can use a tablet or a Chromebook, anything with a web browser. I'm gonna click Start. And the command's been sent to the printer, and we're waiting to hear back from the printer. The printer probably responded fairly quickly. Just as I said before, we only update this page about every 20 seconds. If you're impatient like I tend to be, you can always just hit, oh, there we go, preparing print. And we go over an octoprint here. Oh, slicing done. You know, the model, we told octoprint to grab the STL from the cloud, and we gave it the slicing configuration, and it goes ahead and slices it. And so now we can see down here that the bed, looks like the bed temperature is being set first. And so we're waiting for the bed to heat up. And then probably once it heats up, then the temperature for the extruder will get set. And then once that's all going, it'll actually start printing. We can go over here and look at the camera again. There's not much to see in the G-code vi visualizer. Some other things to play around with while I'm over here in the Polar Cloud. If you wanted to actually, you know, this will just be here. If you actually wanted to upload an object, I'm not too sure what objects I have lying around I can upload, but we can go over to objects. Even though the upload shows up while I'm on public objects, any upload will actually go to your private objects. Anything you upload is private until you choose to make it otherwise. You can also go to Google Drive and pull files over from Google Drive. Uh, you have Tinkercad, you can send files over. Blockscad, you can send files over. Some other people are also working in Integrate to send files to us. Maker's Empire, you can send files over. Let well, me just click Upload. If I click Google Drive here, I'd be able to see stuff on my Google Drive, but I know this account has nothing on Google Drive, so there's not much to see. I can go look down on my laptop, go down here. Okay, here's, you know, what's, uh, there we go. There's calibration piece. Oh, there's 3D Benchy. So let's just load this calibration piece. It shows us uh, any, a rendering of it. And we, I can add more stuff to this list and it, it will upload them all at once. I clicked upload there and it's starting to upload. I can actually click that X, make the window go away and it would continue uploading in the background. Here it took me to my build plate. So objects actually saved over in objects. If I go to objects, click on my private object, there it is. You can edit this and description, license, all that stuff, upload photos if you want. I'm just going to say 3D print. And there it is. You know, let's make, I, I need two of these. So I, I clicked the duplicate button here and now I had two. So I can make it even more. Of course, you can play around, you can rescale. You know, I can scale it bigger, smaller, whatever. You hit rotation. I can rotate it around however I want. Now I have its rotation kind of weird. It won't quite print very well that way. Maybe I should have picked a different axis to rotate it up. But yeah, here let's just spin around the Z. And when you're happy with it, you know you can go play with the printer settings. 
go up a little farther here, print settings. Request is you can put some stuff in like, you know, to tell who, if you can get somebody else's printer, what material you want to print with color, make comments. UI settings just controls this UI. And print settings we saw before is G-code setting, you know, slicer settings. So I'm just going to hit print here. And it's uploading STL to the cloud, with both of those combined. Oh, here it is. It's in my queue. Ah, my print's running over here and I can watch it. And, yep, it's printing away my little cloud ducky. So I'm seeing this from the Polar Cloud. Again, if I was on my cell phone, off at the movies, I could check a print. Uh, that's if you feel comfortable leaving your printer running unattended. I can also click either of these dials, change the temperatures. I can pause it, pause it, change filament. I can actually stop and cancel the print. Uh, down here, you can click on, you know, edit the job. If maybe you want to change parameters to the job, actually add another STL, remove one. I can actually combine multiple jobs if I wanted to. I, I won't show you all that here. This is all documented. I can remove the job. I can have a comment when I remove the job. I can download parts of the, you know, the config file, the slicer config, the STL file. You can move stuff around in the queue. If I go over the manage pages, I can see what's in the queue. I mean, there's brand new printers, so it doesn't have anything in the history. Members is who else maybe you've shared the printer with, or um, and you can also share with groups of people. Usage is usage stats that you can download as CSV files. Settings is settings for the printer, like maybe I'll give it a nicer name and do some other things. <laughs> Let me go back to the dashboard. By the way, if going to build plate, this takes you to an empty build plate. G code job lets you create a job from already sliced G code. <laughs> so you can slice with Simplify 3D, slice, or whatever you want, and just upload the G code and queue it. But that's enough for now. And that's how to get a printer on the Polar Cloud. We'll end this video by showing the final time lapse of the print, which will take a little bit for that print to finish. <laughs> but uh, enjoy this. And remember, the Polar Cloud is polar3d.com. <laughs> right here, polar3d.com. Thank you and uh, enjoy. Now, if the print's finished, you know, here we have it on the screen. There we're looking at the camera, seeing the end of the print. That job now is finished, is no longer in the queue, and we have that other job we made. Just a reminder again, if you click local UI, you get to go to the Octoprint UI. Let's go back here. If we want to go to the manage page, we can see again what's queued. Now there's only one job. If we go to the history, here's all our old jobs. We only have one job, but all of our old jobs will be here saved. You can actually download the STL, the original slicing config. You can requeue the job. You can actually requeue it to other printers if you have more than one. If you just click on the tile, here it is when it was queued, when it was completed, uh, the, S the different objects in it. Um, you might maybe have multiple STLs in it. Comments, you can save comments and you can add a comment like, you know, printed swell. And save the comment. You might want to put other comments in like, you know, it worked better in this other filament, whatever, it's up to you. Snapshot, that's the final print snapshot. We saved the last snapshot. And then you can go to time lapse and see the time lapse moving. But that concludes our little demonstration of putting a printer on the Polar Cloud.